There used to be a sign up above the door of the piano workshop in the London College of Furniture, which is where I learned to restore pianos. And the sign said, never mind, it builds character. Many bad and painful and costly mistakes were made in that workshop. And yes, to an extent I agree, what happened did build a character in us. We all developed habits of behaviour there that helped us to cope and helped us to succeed. But I'm not sure that the character that formed was always wholly good. To form a good character, we need more than just the challenges of life. Left to ourselves to meet those challenges as best we can, everybody picks up bad habits of behaviour and over time they become part of our character. In Jesus, not so. He has a love for people that goes way beyond pink fluffy feelings and best wishes. When we say we love someone, we usually mean we want them to love us and we'll do whatever it takes to get them to do so. In Jesus, love is a genuine desire that people should have from him what is best for them, at his own expense, regardless of what they want him to do. It's love that rebukes the disciples and it's love that touches and heals lepers. And love is the cornerstone of Jesus' character. Another feature of his character is joy. That word in general usage usually means an extreme state of happiness. And therefore, we're always talking about something that comes and goes because, well, no one can be happy all the time, can they? In Jesus, joy is constant. It's not about happy feelings. It's an energy and power that come from knowing that the one person who really matters is thoroughly delighted in him. At his baptism, as Holy Spirit came upon him, a voice came from heaven, You are my son, whom I love, with you I am well pleased. Jesus has peace as part of his character, and not the sort of peace that needs to have quiet and calm or it disappears. He can sleep, for instance, on a boat in a lethal storm amongst twelve terrified disciples. He evidently has the kind of peace inside him that isn't subject to the right circumstances. He is patient. He has to be. He chose for his disciples people who were, in most cases, religious cast-offs. Fishermen and tax collectors then were people who had failed to make the grade. Sinners was the term for them in general use. The fact that he chose them was a public scandal because they were exactly the kind of people who you didn't and shouldn't waste your time with. He gave them plenty of time. He did not rush to condemn them or categorise them. He gave people time and space for their stories to change. That is patience. His character was kind. That is not to say nice. It's to say that he healed people, for instance, who had absolutely no call on his time and didn't deserve his help. That's kindness. He is gentle, but not the kind of gentleness that won't do anything for fear of hurting someone. His gentleness is the gentleness of minimum necessary force. By the general standards of the day, as measured by the experts, Jesus could not possibly be a good man. This was because he appeared to be breaking the rules, healing people on the Sabbath, for example. Someone who broke those rules couldn't possibly be a good person. But Jesus' character, his whole life as well as his teaching, posed an awkward question to them. What good was their goodness doing to anyone else? They couldn't really deny the fact that he was doing people all the good in the world. What were they doing? When goodness is in your character, it finds expression in everything you do. Faithfulness is different in Jesus too. Where most people set limits for their faithfulness according to what is reasonable. With Jesus it's the other way round. He'll always do what's faithful and let that decide what's reasonable. He told his disciples once, my food is to do the will of him who sent me. All that's in his character. It's habits of behaviour that aren't affected at all by what people think or whether or not he's being watched. Those around him generally haven't a notion what he's doing or why. So when they do call him out on something, like Peter did more than once, 
They're always wrong. But Jesus has self-control in his own character. So what is the key? How come Jesus' character got shaped in this way? The answer is, not that any particular circumstances did it, or that accidents did it, or bad events even that happened to him did it. The answer is that Holy Spirit shaped Jesus' character, and when people are filled with Holy Spirit, he will at once begin to shape their character in the same way. Here is what Paul wrote in Galatians 5. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things there is no law. So, things to think about. How do you think your character has been formed? We've also given an account of different versions that the world has of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. How have you seen differences between that and what we're talking about in Jesus? And what kind of character would you like to see formed in you? If you have been, thank you for listening.